It was March 2020, just before the spring break in America. Out of nowhere, colleges and universities announced they are shutting down the campuses. Students were asked to leave the dormitories and go home. International students struggled because they had no place to go and their flights were canceled. Staff and professors and college teachers were asked to go home and work from home. The spring break was extended by two weeks so that we can prepare to go from in-person teaching to remote learning as it is called. Faculty were trained how to use Zoom technology or its counterparts, use Canvas as a platform for having all of the course content put in, and we made the transition from the real world to the virtual world. Surprising to everybody, it went well. There was a sigh of relief. There were a few glitches here and there. Students got used to having classes taken from their home or apartment complexes. And faculty got used to teaching from their homes or their personal offices. And they had more equipment, more software, hardware, etc., put together as they began to teach the spring semester. The grades were given online. Final exams were given online. This is the world of digital learning. Welcome to the world of digital learning. This is the new phase of learning. And what I'm going to articulate is how learning has changed over time from the days of hunters and gatherers to the farming economy, to the industrial economy, and now the digital economy. Learning is fundamental. It's innate in human beings, but it is also true in animals, true in vegetations. All the scientific evidence shows a living species, unless it learns and adapts to the environment, is not likely to survive. Learning is as innate, therefore, as hunger. And as you can starve to death without learning, you may not survive because you're not able to adapt to the changes taking place in the environment. So learning being so critical, we need to understand how people learn. In the hunters and gatherer days, learning was individual. You learned on your own. You went out into the jungle and you found prey. You figured out how to catch the prey. You became entrepreneurship by necessity, by survival essentially. And it was all experiential learning. Didn't speak much either at that time. Now comes the farming age where you congregate together as a community of several thousands of people or more. This is predating the big metropolitan cities. And you learn three ways. I call the three C's of learning. You learn from the congregation, the academies, like the Greek academies of Aristotle and Plato. So there was a guru, a teacher, who taught you how to do things, or philosophy. Then you had the learning by craft. You learned another C called craft, and that you learned how to be a goldsmith or how to be a, a silversmith or whatever the uh, occupation that you were involved. And you learned from the community, how to live in the community, how to behave in the community. And at that time, a person born will be dying in the same community. In fact, he would never leave the community. So communities were all very local. There was no national identity at that time. There were no sovereign states in their mind, as it is true in many parts of the world even today. Now comes the industrial age. All of a sudden, mass production in the factories needs more people with literacy. So we invented three R's of learning, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Governments even had policy to make sure that the people don't work in the farm as children but come to the classroom and study. So high school education became mandatory. In other words, either 12 years or 18 years became necessary. And you had to learn three hours of learning. Now comes the digital age, where the learning will shift again into what I call three eyes of learning. Hours of learning becomes obsolete. Three eyes of learning becomes mainframe, main, main, mainstream, and the first law I is interactive. Learning will become more interactive because of the technology. And of course, all the scientific evidence shows 
that when you have a lot of interaction between the student and the teacher or student and the knowledge, then the, there's more engagement because of that there's more retention because of that there's more learning. Learning will be integrated. What is common between math and music? We never thought about it, but there is something in common because both are languages. So one can go to a meta-analysis and figure out the common structure and therefore we don't have these debates anymore in the digital world that you are good in math but not in music or arts and culture. You are good in arts and culture but not in math. I think that's a missed, uh, that's, that, that's a mm, philosophy or something we have created which is not absolutely true. And then the learning will be individualized. So we will have mass affordability with this technology that is unprecedented. And learning can take place any place, any time, does not have to be, for example, learning in a local environment, in a local community. The reach of internet and the digital technology is enormous. The three eyes of learning will be the new framework. Interactive, integrated, individualized. Which by definition means that one can democratize learning and have these haves and the have-nots in the digital divide that we talk about could be made into common platform. The world can be flat in the process. There is no some such thing as unlearning people and learning people. Democratization of technology is today very possible in the digital age compared to the electromechanical age. I also believe that this learning platform will be having consequences like any technology has consequences but positive consequences will be greater than the negative consequences. So what is likely to happen? First of all, tablets will become textbooks. All the content is digitized today anyhow. So traditional textbooks that we have will be peripheral essentially. Printed copies will give way to a digital content. Content will be so massive that we'll have to learn how to curate the content how to organize it, just like a library organizes the content or a museum organizes the artifacts. There will be more self-learning rather than relying somebody else to teach us. We'll be learning how to self-learn ourselves, just like artificial intelligence is self-learning, machine learning is self-learning. We can do as humans even better. And learning will be assisted by bots and robots, especially for professors and teachers there is no need for teaching assistance. Today I can have a bot and a robot that assist me, does all my work beforehand I go into the classroom. This is a totally different world, but it's a world where the journey has just begun and things that are happening so fast from a technological viewpoint that these three eyes of learning will happen sooner than later. The divide between the emerging economies and advanced economies will become plateauing especially with the cell phone technology bypassing the PC revolution that we went through, China, India, Africa, all those countries will find that they can be in the knowledge community as, as quickly and as well as any place in the advanced economies. Welcome to the world of three eyes of learning.